Also, before I get started, um, if you like these videos, then I'd really appreciate it if you left me a like or a comment, or subscribe to my channel especially. Gotta try and convince that YouTube algorithm that my videos are worth promoting. It doesn't seem to think so at the moment. Anyway, so this is the case of the Curry Poisoner. Um, in Japanese, that is the Wakayama Kare Jiken, or also the Wakayama Tokubutsu Kare Jiken. Many returned home, embarrassed to get sick in front of their neighbors. 
corpse who ended up dying from the poisoning were 64-year-old Takatoshi Taninaka, who was the chairman of the Residents Association of Sonobe, like I said, and a 53-year-old Takaki Tanaka, who was the vice chairman of the Residents Association, and then 10-year-old Hirotaka Hayashi, and 16-year-old Miyuki Tori. Miyuki Tori. So, this incident was one of the worst cases of mass poisoning ever recorded in Japan. I guess at the time. Um, in an article published on July 27th, which was two days after the festival, reported that the poison used was cyanide, not arsenic. Saying, the victims from the small community of Wakayama have suffered incessant vomiting, irregular heartbeat, and numbness. Yeah, I guess. 
because it was still the biggest one in the area, so. The Hayashis also drove a BMW, which wouldn't really be considered that special in, like, the U.S. or England or wherever. But, um, in Japan, cars aren't really as much of, like, a status symbol as they are in the West, I guess. So, people, like, a lot of people just drive those really ugly, boxy ones. Um, yeah, cars are more, I guess, I mean, they're exceptions.
another man who was an employee of the couple at um, Genji's extermination business, I think, died in 1985 under mysterious circumstances. Suspicion fell on the couple who had used arsenic in their termite extermination business um, after press reports named them as beneficiaries of insurance policies taken out on the lives of each of the three men. Masumi Hayashi especially was suspected of poisoning them to collect on those policies. Foul play was suspected but never confirmed in the death of the employee in 1985. The two Hayashis collected about $200,000 in insurance money from a policy that they'd taken out in his name. Pretty suspicious. A company using the couple's address collected insurance payments each time the two men who used to eat at their home were hospitalized. The Hayashis declared their innocence in a television interview on September 7th, 1998. Um, and remember, the poisoning was back in July 25th, so, you know, a couple months later, they still hadn't been arrested or anything. Um, and their identities were hidden during the interview. Kenji Hayashi said, quote, my conscience is clear. In February 1997, Masumi fed her husband Kenji food laced with arsenic. He obviously survived, though. Investigators said they found minuscule traces of arsenic both in Masumi's hair and in her house. Scientific analysis suggests that it had the same chemical profile as the poison found in the curry, and that which and that which Genji once used to exterminate 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 termites. At the time, despite knowing all this about the Hayashis, the police didn't call them in for questioning just yet. Even if insurance fraud was involved in the earlier cases, it's not clear why anyone in Sono Bay would want to poison so many neighbors at once, which is probably why the police were hesitant to make a move on them. The community, of course, wanted to see the case taken care of ASAP. Quote, people can't lead ordinary lives, says Jiro Hanada, a former chairman, a former chairman of the, of the Residents Association. We want to get back to normal. Seeing a bug or something. Um, anyway, detectives found that Masumi was left alone with the curry for 15 minutes, giving her the opportunity to do whatever she wanted to do it while it simmered. So, three months after the poisoning, on October 4th, 1998, 30 detectives, pursued by 500 journalists who were acting on police tip offs, turned up to arrest Kenji and Masumi Hayashi. Even though most of the charges had been leaked well in advance by police and prosecutors who found themselves under a lot of pressure to make an arrest, they were still sensational once they hit the newspaper headlines. Both Hayashis were initially charged with fraudulent insurance claims based on exaggerations of their injuries um, and not anything related to the Curry incident. The police, yeah. Masumi had refused to answer investigators' questions since her arrest in October, along with her husband, so she wasn't talking. She was served a second arrest warrant in December that year for the curry poisoning. Her four children, the oldest of which was a son who was 11, who will come back up later in this, uh, were taken into protective custody at a children's nursing home. I don't know if that's like a weird translation. I guess they just went to like an orphanage or a CPS or whatever. Whatever. Um, the case was very sensational at the time, and as such, 5,000 people tried to get in to see the trial at the Wakayama courtroom. Um, and there were only 80 public seats, so out of those 5,000 people, not a lot of people got in. The court, the district court, had recently renovated the courtroom uh, to enable the gallery to hold 80 people, compared with 50 previously in consideration of the media's strong interest in the case. More than 5,200 people lined up for the 45 gallery seats available to the public. Okay, yeah, that's just the same thing as what I said before. I guess there were 80 public seats, but then half of those were filled up by other people. So, many of the seats went to the media, who had paid off members of the public to get them. Masumi Hayashi's case was extremely complicated, said one article that I read, and the prosecution's opening arguments alone ran 200 pages. The prosecutors were basing their case mainly on circumstantial evidence and state-of-the-art laboratory tests. They say have identified arsenic examples taken from her home as the same kind of arsenic used in the curry poisoning. So that's what I said before. Masumi pleaded 
realized her constitutional rights remained silent. Her motive for the poisoning was speculated on by pretty much everyone. There's the reason that I mentioned earlier when I was talking about why the townspeople suspected her, and then I'll mention some others in a moment, um, but she's never spoken on the matter other than to say that she's innocent, of course, so no one can really be sure why she did it, or you know, if she did it. During opening arguments in the trial, the prosecution accused her of poisoning the curry with, quote, the intention to murder indiscriminately anyone who had the possibility of eating it. The prosecution said that the motive for the poisoning was that Masami felt like she was being alienated by neighbors while they were making preparations on July 25th for the festival at a garage where the pots of curry and other material were being kept, and that infuriated her. So, between noon and 1 p.m., when she was watching over the material at the garage alone, she went back home to get the hundred, or thousand, depending on which article, I guess, grams of arsenic from her kitchen, brought it back to the garage in a blue paper cup, and mixed it into the curry, the prosecution said. Masami is accused of putting arsenious acid, which is one of the most toxic types of arsenic, into the curry. On top of the charges of murder and attempted murder in the curry poisoning case, Masumi was also, was also indicted for crimes in seven other cases, which would be the fraud ones. She pleaded not guilty to charges of attempted murder in four other cases, allegedly trying to kill three people by lacing foods and drinks with arsenic from 1987 to 1998. The three were her husband, an employee of his company, and a male acquaintance. I guess, I guess, I think that excludes the guy that she actually killed in 85, um, because I thought there were two friends that repeatedly got sick from going over to dinner at their house, but maybe it was only one friend, I don't know. Anyway, she told the court, quote, I never made them take arsenic. Real enlightening. Prosecutors allege she had attempted to kill the three schemes to receive payouts on life insurance money. Yeah, I guess that doesn't include the guy that she actually killed, because she didn't attempt to kill him, she did kill him, you know? So, I don't know. Anyway, she didn't just try to get Kenji with the arsenic once either, but three times, apparently. In 1997, she put arsenic in his drink. He'd also shown symptoms of arsenic poisoning in 1988 and 1995. Outlining details leading to poisoning, the prosecution told the court that Masumi had especially held a murderous urge against her husband since the early 1990s, although they have four children together. Quote, I have a good drug and I'm planning to kill that old man, Kenji, by having him take it little by little. The prosecutors said Masumi told her former colleagues sometimes, sometime between 1991 and 1994. The prosecutors also argued that Masumi told the wife of one of Kenji's employees around the summer of 1986, quote, I wish that old man would die soon. He's so much older than me. And also, quote, if he dies, I can receive a lot of insurance money and enjoy a carefree life with my kids. The trial was expected to continue for at least several years in the district court, and it did because she was finally convicted on December 10th, 2002, at the age of 40 now, and she was sentenced to death. Found guilty, obviously. At the same time as Masumi's trial, the court began hearing three fraud charges against Kenji, who once added an ant extermination company. I said termite before, but this one says ant. I guess it was just an extermination company, like, it ain't really that deep. The couple entered guilty pleas in three cases of fraud, which did not involve the use of arsenic. So I guess those are the ones where they lied about their own injuries and stuff. The defendants said the accusation that they illegally received insurance money was, quote, correct. So I'm guessing that they pled guilty to that and didn't even, oh, see, I forgot. Didn't even try to get off on that one. In one of the fraud cases, the couple allegedly swindled four insurance companies. Out of 137 million yen, which is $955,802.83 USD, not accounting for inflation. Um, I also saw the number listed as 160 million yen, which would be 
were unable to pay the sum, though they had admitted responsibility. The doctor had denied any wrongdoing, saying that he was not approached by the two to falsify a diagnosis. I guess he was saying that he couldn't be guilty since they didn't specifically ask him for a fake diagnosis. I don't know if they like lied to the doctor and he just believed them and diagnosed them with something without like proper testing. especially 
even wrote a book about his experience. Um, her son was 10 years old at the time of the arrest. I think earlier I said he was 11, so I guess the articles couldn't agree on his age. Um, and he was 15 years old when the first death sentence was handed down. Quote, of the time I spent with my family, I have only happy memories. My life changed completely. The son, now 34, whose name is not being published, said in an interview. When the Wakayama District Court sentenced his mother to death in 2002, the ruling seemed unreal, he recalls. After the Supreme Court held the use of capital... Oh, I can't concentrate with these hairs floating around. Anyway, after the Supreme Court upheld the use of capital punishment in 2009, he read the verdict for the first time. Despite the absence of direct evidence such as eyewitness testimony or DNA, citing other insurance fraud cases she had committed by poisoning people, including her husband, with arsenic before the Curry case. However, the son remembers that his father was also actively involved in fraud, but he wasn't suspected in the Curry poisoning despite that. In addition, the ruling said that Masumi's motives for the mass poisoning had not yet been determined. Learning that descriptions in the ruling, quote, from what my mother was like at the time. I started to think something was wrong, the son said. Since being released from prison, Kenji Hayashi, now 76, has claimed in media interviews that his wife was falsely accused. Finding it difficult to watch his father offering to be interviewed at such an advanced age, the son started accepting media interviews. Quote, considering the victims and their family, I'm aware that I should never easily say that I believe in my mother, the son said. But my mother still pleads not guilty and her motives are still unknown. I can't just sit by and see a family member hanged. In an attempt to relay his side of the story, the son opened his Twitter account in April 2019 under the name The Eldest Son, The Wakayama Curry Case. Through that account, he posts information about his mother's petition for a retrial and letters from her in detention. He has also published a book about the incident and about himself. The book's title is Mo Nigenai Ima Made Tamateita Kazoku no Koto, which is in English, I'm not running anymore, about the family who stayed quiet until now. Or I guess on the family who stayed quiet until now. So the tagline of that was I didn't write the pronunciation for these kanji because I because I knew how to read it, but now I can't remember how to read it. It's not Hitokoroshi. Thank you. 
seems pleased with what he's doing. Quote, I hope my posts will give people a chance to look back at the incident, he said. I will continue to follow the case with the intention of being by my parents' side until the end. I have an interview with him. Um, that was timed out. So it goes, how often do you visit your mother? I used to visit twice a year, but after the massive hangings in 2018, I guess they hung a lot of people. My mother has become nervous, and I now visit four times a year. It takes over two hours one way to get to the detention center, and I can only see her for 20 minutes. An officer is always present in the room, and a camera films everything. The camera is only used for those on death row. What is your family's comprehension on the situation? None of us can really fathom it. There is no substantial evidence. All that exists is circumstantial. There is no confession, and the state has never shown a motive. How does someone get sentenced to death on such scant material? How is she doing? Not very good. Death row prisoners do not receive dental treatment, and she has lost most of her teeth. She is allowed outside her cell only for exercise, bathing, and visits. Exercises twice a week a large dog run and always alone. Likewise, bathing is also twice a week. She may not speak with other prisoners. All meals are served in her cell. TV is allowed only a few times during the year when there are consecutive holidays. She may not receive visits or even mail from non-family members. If you send her a card, she is told who it is from but not allowed to see it. How has having a mother on death row impacted your life? Things were hard at school. I was isolated and ignored by other kids. Naturally, my employer does not know about the situation. In order to rent an apartment, a guarantor is necessary, and nobody wants to be mine. I found a wonderful woman and wanted to get married. She didn't mind that my mother was on death row, but when her parents learned, the engagement was broken off. Do you fear that she might be executed? Our attorneys are doing a superb job of collecting new scientific evidence. The appeals will continue on for many years. It's very unlikely that she will be executed anytime soon. She may very well languish on death row and pass away from old age. If she were sentenced to life, she would be in a prison and working and communicating with other prisoners. Her present fate is to rot in solitude. And if all that isn't enough, there's actually more. So on, on June 9th, the day Masumi filed her petition for a retrial. Actually, let me see what year that was. I think June 9th. I don't think that was 2022. 2021. So on June 9th, 2021, the same day that she filed her newest petition for a retrial, around 2.20 p.m., a 37-year-old woman is believed to have called emergency services from her residence in Wakayama City. Quote, my daughter spit up blood, or, quote, my daughter spit up what appears to be blood, the woman said about her eldest daughter. She's collapsed and unconscious. The daughter, 16-year-old Kokoro Tsurusaki, was later confirmed dead at a hospital. An examination of her body revealed bruising throughout, including to her abdomen. The cause of death was shock due to external trauma, police said. The woman is believed to have then driven to Kansai Airport in Izumi Sano City, Osaka Prefecture, a distance of about 40 kilometers from her house with her four-year-old daughter. At around 4 p.m., she jumped from Sky Gate Bridge R, which provides access to the Kansai Airport. The woman and her four-year-old daughter, who was in her arms at the time of the fall, were both confirmed dead 40 minutes later pulled out of the water below the bridge by EMTs. In addition to the mom and the two daughters, the girl's father lived in the house, and it's reported that he rode inside the ambulance with Kokoro to the hospital. However, later on, he was found squatting on the side of a road in the Minato area of Wakayama City. Quote, I tried to hang myself but failed. He reportedly told emergency personnel while they took him to the hospital. After the emergence of the chain of events, police said that they were planning to question the father over suspected ill treatment of Kokoro. A child. 
almost an hour, there seems to be no doubt that it was my eldest daughter who committed suicide, and her four-year-old girl, his granddaughter, died with her. Even now, this case is still being talked about in Japan. By that, I mean the curry poisoning. Um, and I found some videos on YouTube where people debate whether or not Masumi Hayashi is really guilty. The most recent one I found was from last year, so it's still being talked about a lot. I also found a video that seemed to intimately detail the experiences of uh, the Hayashi's four kids um, after the arrest. But the video was all in Japanese, no English subtitles. So I watched it, but I um, couldn't understand that much because it wasn't even like, it wasn't like a dialect. I mean, I still understood enough, but it's basically basically said that the youngest kid, who was like four or something at the time, um, just didn't understand what was going on, and the rest of the kids were bullied pretty badly in school, um, which is basically what the oldest son said when talking about his experience. You can also find um, his interviews on YouTube as well. Um, they're fully in Japanese though, so good luck with that. I'm sure you could also go find his Twitter account if you wanted to. It's in Japanese. I didn't even look at it, honestly. I did watch one of the interviews, um, which is what the screenshot that I have is a picture of him is from. And he was really talking about, like, what was it like? What was his family like? And how were they treated, like, immediately after the case? Or immediately? immediately after the poisoning, I mean, you know, before they were suspected, and he basically said that, like, on the day, like, everything was completely normal, you know, like, he hung out with his friends, he came home, everything, everyone was acting normal, um, yeah, I didn't really watch a huge amount of it, because it's in Japanese, and it's really, you know, above my level, so there weren't even like subtitles that I could look at, so it's unfortunate, but I think I got pretty much all the details. Um, yeah, so let me know what you think about this. Do you think Masumi Hayashi is the poisoner, or do you think it was someone else and that person just really got lucky that everyone just turned around and put into the Hayashi's and didn't look at anyone else. Personally, I don't really know. Like, I guess I've been swayed by all the articles that were saying, like, yeah, she did it, into thinking that, yeah, she did it. But, and I don't know, the fact that she keeps saying that she's innocent, that she's been saying that for, since, what, 1999? Or was it 2000 that she, wait, was it 2002 that she got convicted? I don't remember, but it's been like 20 years, so the fact that she's continued to maintain her innocence, though, I don't know if that necessarily means anything, because like, if she's not innocent, she really did it, then she's just saying it because she wants to get out of jail, and based on the description, like, that jail is a shithole, <laughs> so I bet anyone would want to get out of there. extortionist who poisoned a bunch of people with cyanide while doing a dysentery, doing a fake dysentery investigation. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able to find about that though. Yeah, I've got a lot of other cases in mind to do. I was thinking about doing like some Halloween themed ones. Um, there's another one. Actually, I don't remember. I think it was a guy dressed up like the Joker. I think he stabbed some people on a train, or maybe he didn't do anything, but people thought it was weird. I don't remember. He had to have done something. Like, people dress up all the time. No one thinks that's weird, so there's that case, but I've already done two train stabbing ones, so there's also a case of a Japanese teenager.
teenager, an exchange student who got killed in the U.S. on Halloween. Um, if I end up doing a Halloween video, it'll probably be like a compound one. Like it'll be a couple cases, because that one that I just mentioned, the kid who got um, killed in the U.S., it's pretty short and straightforward. Um, and that Joker one is probably relatively short and straightforward, too. You know, if you stab people on a train, then you stab people on a train. So... I'll have to look for some other cases. Um, they don't really celebrate Halloween that much in Japan. They we do in the US. I'm sure you can imagine. But I think they do do like costume parties and stuff. Like, you know, the Japanese love to dress up. <laughs> cosplay and all that, so... I wonder if you can see like the little hairs on the camera. I call on. I hope not, but they're literally just like drifting through the air. Ugh. I definitely inhaled one. Maybe I was being too rough with this thing. Anyway, and I'm rambling. Um, I'm still planning on doing like an outfit haul on a room tour. Um, I have a lot of like stuff going on with school and working. And Which is why I haven't made a video recently. And also I went on two trips, I got my new tattoo, and I went to Albuquerque, New Mexico, for um, the Hot Air Balloon Festival. I was thinking about making like a little mini travel vlog thing about it, but I don't know if I will or not. It depends on how well the tattoo one does. But also like, I went with people and they're in the videos. I don't have their like permission to be in, like shown in videos. So I'd probably not. I guess I just have to use the footage that doesn't have people in it. So I don't know, maybe I'll just make a short or something. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. Uh, yeah. I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, didn't have a huge amount of Japanese in it, but I guess I feel like I have the standard amount. Like the usual amount that just a couple sentences. Um, and like I said, if you've made it this far and paid attention the whole time, there's the idle stabbing one, um, which has 20 minutes of me speaking Japanese in it, reading a two page long uh, victim impact statement. So if you haven't had your fellow Japanese yet and you want to hear more, you want to hear me struggle to pronounce words in Japanese for 20 minutes, you can go and watch that one. I very much appreciate it if you